your spot. All right, welcome everyone to today's news conference. Uh, Tech will be taking on South Carolina in Columbia Saturday night, 7.30. Game time, again, 7.30 of the uh, televised on the SEC network. Uh, so we'll turn it over to Coach Stoops. Sure. Thanks, Tony. Um, <clears throat> you know, not much different reaction for myself after watching the film of the previous game about what I told you uh, post-game. You know, very good football team. Had our opportunities to get it close to, to make it a game. Didn't make those plays. Um, that's a very, very good football team that, you know, I believe. I mean, I'm not their... Uh, whatever PR person but uh, but when it's all said and done that 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 team's uh, right there I'd like to I'd like to see three or four teams better than them the way they're playing the way they're um, getting stronger and stronger as the year goes on uh, very good team and uh, so for us you know we got to put it behind us you know we've, we've lost to some some good football teams you know three of our four losses are Top 10 teams or top 11 teams, three of them are top 11. All of them are in the top 20. Uh, good football teams. We have to find a way. Uh, we had an opportunity in the teams that were out just outside the top 10 or, uh, you know, to make plays, you know, to, to win those games. I, I, I'm as frustrated as most people uh, to, try to try to get better, try to find those plays uh, to win those games. Um, but we're not defeated. We have to regroup in a hurry and uh, and get ready to go on the road and try to get uh, uh, win number seven for us here this week at South Carolina, a team that um, obviously has played much better uh, the past two weeks. I've also played some very good football teams and uh, are, are more than capable of uh, – of playing well in all phases. Uh, they're always strong in special teams. Uh, you know, their offense is extremely explosive. Spencer Rattler is a guy that's been around for a long time. Um, I feel like their running back uh, is playing at a very, very high level. And uh, defensively, um, made a few changes this past week. It'll be interesting to see uh, which direction they go, uh, you know, schematically, not not totally, but uh, definitely some mix-ups that we have to be prepared for, some change-ups, and uh, a very good team. And, and we're looking to just get better, have a great week, and go down there in another very tough environment and try to get a win. Mark, the losses you spoke up to those top 11 teams, Georgia and Alabama being two of them, what did it tell you about the types of plays you need to recruit? Well, that's, you know, that's, that's what I think... What is there, 136 in 1A now? That's about a, about 133 of us are looking for those, you know. There's two or three of them that have them, you know, top to bottom like that. And certainly some of the others that I don't study as well, but I know Michigan, Ohio State, and some others, you know, some of the teams out west have some really good teams as well. But, you know, I put those two against anybody. You know, they're just uh, just very good football teams. Rally. Pardon me. Beast. With you said it, but I'll second that. Yes. <laughs> Rattler's able to create quite a few explosives if he yeah. has time back there. So after yeah. you know, pretty rough outing uh, in the secondary, how do you kind of try to yeah. get him to regroup? You're right. Similar in that he can buy time, and uh, he's he's also very good in the pocket. Uh, and it was a problem this past week. Um, so we have to do a better job in, in both areas. Our rushes, we need to be better at rushing, more disciplined, more relentless, you know, uh, secondary guys, you know, getting to the quarterback, not rushing past the quarterback, letting them have that easy pocket to step up into, and then plastering and covering and being better uh, down the field as well. Um, because he is similar in that way. He's, Spencer's got a very good feel uh, for moving around the pocket. You and Brad both mentioned you'll try it a lot, uh, <clears throat> especially what? third downs, you know, whether it's blitzing, right. you know, everything. Is it, is it maybe a case where less might be more? I, I think everything's fair to look at. You know, when we, when we analyze games, I mean, um, 
you know, contrary to what, you know, people think. We're not as hard-headed as everybody thinks. I mean, we look at everything, you know, when we second-guess ourselves, of course. You know, when, when something doesn't work, you know, maybe we should have done this or that. And so we look at a lot of things um, and analyze it all, all the time. You know, late in the year, it's not like we can't, you know, make, you know, we constantly make subtle changes and try to do the best we can to put our players in a position to be successful. Sometimes it's very hard matchups. You know what I mean? You got, you got to try to, you know, you got to win. And uh, you can't protect all the time. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of magical calls. You've heard me say that for years. You got to win. And so when you're playing very elite teams, you know, they have answers for you. You know, and you're in zone, they go here. You're in man, they go here. And especially when you have a quarterback that does such a nice job of running and uh, buying time in the pocket. Mark, it feels like I've asked you this a couple of times this year just because you guys face so many good pass catchers. But what mm -hmm. makes Leggett so good for them? I know he's really big. He, he's, a, he's a big, strong guy and uh, can really run. Um, so I think that's, you know, the biggest thing is, is size, speed, and strength and makes competitive plays and been around for a while. <laughs> Mark, with Dow Loggins first year home plays, what have you seen from him and what kind of challenges does his offense bring? Yeah, I really like Dow. I like him as a person, as a coach. I think he's uh, very creative. Um, they create explosive plays. I mean, they're making a lot of hay on first and second down. And, you know, P and 10, you know, uh, explosives. Um, they like to get the ball moving, and when they get moving, they could they could really ro you know go. So um, you know I think they do a nice job of creating explosive plays. You think that you could get Andrew Phillips back next week? I hope so. We'll see. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope to. Mark, outside of that, it seems like what you all refer to as the eye discipline has been a problem, kind of a mm -hmm. persistent problem. Should experience fix that, or what's the key to sort of getting that tight? Down? Well, there's different levels and different variations of that. Um, you know, coming out of coverage or doing some of that, some 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 plays that are off schedule. You know, can it happen? Really, it happens to everybody. I don't care. Watch pro ball. Watch you know, watch it all. It happens to everybody. And I'd like to not see it happen, you know, over, over and over again. Um, but it happens. Um, you know, to me, you know, that, that's one thing. And then the other eye discipline with candy, with run game and different things like that. I mean, that's, that's kind of football. You know, not, not everybody's stagnant anymore. And so we've been very good at that at times. And, I mean, even, um, you know, I mean, you go back and, and I want to open myself to Chris's, but it's like a team like Missouri and how good they are with all that. Like, there, there's a large portion of that game will play very good. Very good defense football against a team that's moving on everybody. Um, you know, um, so you know, they're, they're, it's it's not constant. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that. You know, I think we played with with some of the teams we played that that uh, the off schedule plays that really hurt us. I mean, heck, in that game, a, a fake punt is off schedule. You know, for a for a fifty, you know. For a 50-yard gain, you know, you take that out, and there's some good plays, and they're a good game. It's a good football game, man. You know, it's real, it's, it's close. So. Long run by Ramon. It seems like the explosive plays haven't quite been there in the run game. Yeah. I know you talked earlier in the year about, you know, maybe trusting the backs, trusting the play instead of bouncing out. Is it something like that, or is it run blocking? What is the No, I think, I think, yeah, you're, you're correct. I think, um, you know, our yards per attempt were just not very impressive if you take that that run out um, so yeah we need to be a little more efficient we need to get back to point of attack um, you know some some strong defenses up front but we still have to do a better job you know and uh, we've done a nice job of getting the ball in the perimeter at different times and mixing that in uh, but also needing to get yards you know with our with our power run game or inside run game and uh, you know, so we need to get some movement, make sure we get back to being a little more physical uh, in all sides, whether it's the O-line, uh, tight ends, and backs, making sure they hit the hole and, and get in the tough yards. If it's a four-yard run, then get, get four or five, you know, and, and uh, go from there. I understand it's you're, you, want, you expect your team to get up uh, for any SEC opponent, but uh, there's a chance to keep them out of the postseason. 
to kind of play spoiler here, is that something you think you can get some more out of your guys? That zero, zero influence on me on what happens to them. None, and I don't think our team either. Full placement is, is a reality for us, I think. You know what I mean? I think in, improving our placement, improving our record in the SEC, you know, getting another win, you know what they're – you know, you know what it's worth. I mean, so I think that motivation is more what we're concerned about is us, is us trying to get uh, another win and, you know, get to 500 in the SEC and and get to another win and improve our our placement. When you're playing a team like, as you mentioned there, Shane does a lot of things on special teams. You mentioned their offensive coordinator, very creative. Mm -hmm. When you're, do you try to prepare for everything or do you just say, we got to we, got, we can't worry about that. We've got to do fundamental things. Yeah, we have to apply rules when it comes to, to that. Well, you're talking two different things. If you're talking offensively or if you're talking special teams, special teams you do have to prepare for a lot. And the big thing is apply the rules and have great discipline. And getting back to your question with the I, you know, be, just even in all special teams applying rules because people can get creative with different uh, ways to create formations. You know, college football is way more liberal than pro football with – what we can do and how we can, you know, disguise, you know, formations and eligible receivers and things of that nature. So that's the kind of stuff we have to be on point with in that area. Um, and there is a lot, you know, there's, you know, we can try to create a lot, you know, to create every one of them, you know, not so much. We don't have time for that, to your point. Um, but offensively, um, I think it's, you know, I think, we all understand that run, play, action, pass, shots. You know when? When are they going to take their shots? When are they going to go for that? You know, setting them up. What formations? Window dress them different ways. I mean that. You know, I think just applying our rules and in, in, in anticipation, and then and then making plays. You know, we talked about some of their wideouts and their big guys that can run and making plays down the field. Just a couple weeks ago, you guys won on the road in Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. and I know at a game in between, there's something, you know, they're still fighting for postseason, like I mentioned earlier. Is there something you pull from that road environment win just a couple weeks ago? Well, I think, I, I think you. it doesn't hurt. I mean, we just went and did that and, and played in a tough environment. And, um, you know, it, 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 yeah, it takes some concentration. It takes some resolve. It takes some toughness from your football team to really lock in and go on the road with that mentality and, um, you know, and, and, and pull the victory off. Hopefully we can learn a few things from that and hopefully we can clean up a few things from that game as well. Mark, in, in, in regard to special teams, specifically the, the punting game, um, it's been a little bit precarious <coughs> this year. What is mm -hmm. your thought process in regard to personnel changes? Well, you know, right now, I mean, our, our team is – what it is. I mean, if I felt like there was somebody there right now that could help us, as I mentioned in several other press conferences, we would do that. Um, you know, I thought we were uh, we were better in this past game with a dynamic return game. At least if we weren't hitting the great punch, John, we had good net. You know, our nets were 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 decent. You know, so I think we got fortunate with one bounce, and then he hit a couple of good ones with some hang that didn't give him a chance for a big return, which helped us. So I thought we were a touch better. You know, at least it didn't you know, completely, you know, really hurt us in that in the, in the net punting game uh, this past week. Now their punter, you know, that was another one. They didn't have to punt too many times, but when they did, that was another level. Mark, in the, in the losses, I mean, Missouri was a fast start, but the other three games, offensive second possession, they're down, you're all mm -hmm. down double digits mm -hmm. that fast. Is there anything sticking out with the slow starts and why those are happening? Well, we're not getting first downs. I mean, obviously, I mean, the state in the obvious there, but, you know, we think we came up with a half, you know, half yard short, and, you know, one time, and I went for it another time at one of the games. And so, yeah, it's, it gets it gets a bit frustrating. Um, I think, you know, I can't put my finger on any one one thing. You know, we need to execute better. We need to fight for those yards. You know, we need to get those. And, you know, coaches say it a lot of different ways, fight for the inches, a yard, a play here or there. And those are the things we really got to focus on, you know, and, and starting is, is one of them. You know, if, if you have the ball, it doesn't matter whether you open the game with it or first possession or whatever. But, 
you know, even getting a couple first downs, getting the ball moving does help. It helps your confidence. It helps with field position. It helps with a lot of things. It helps with plays, as we've mentioned in here many times. You know, too many three and outs. You're not getting enough touches. That hurts, you know, a lot of, a lot of things. So uh, we need to try to um, have better answers. I think coaches would be the first one to tell you that uh, we need to put them in better position. Let's give them a chance to be successful. And then let's execute and let's play. Coaching Carousel's already cranked up. Uh, Jimbo lost his job yesterday. I know you've got a close relationship. Did you anticipate that? Have you reached out to him or anything? I, I haven't reached out yet. I'm sure he's got way too much on, on his plate right now. Um, so, uh, no, I haven't reached out. And I, I know guys on their staff that I'm friends with as well. I haven't reached out to anybody. I've had moan. Uh, things going on here to try to put our team in a position to win. But, uh, you know, I think we all know what's part of our – part of the gig here in this league in, in particular. And uh, uh, same with, with Zach, you know. Didn't, didn't see that coming either, but uh, don't know Zach that well. But, um, you know, that's, 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 he got put in a really – that was a tough position to be put in. Mark, J.J. tweeted out. His speech stress. By not being able to get Alabama off the field with all the three and outs. Pardon me? Uh, yeah, defense being stressed. Stress. Stress. Yeah, because yeah. Alabama couldn't get off the field. Yeah, I think that's it's fair. It's, it's, it's always team. I mean, not pointing fingers at any one area. Our defense had opportunities to get off the field. We couldn't do it. And then three and outs or turnovers don't help either. You know, so goes hand in hand when you're playing a really good team. And yes, it could, it can overwhelm you, you know, because you have to play good in all areas. And uh, as I've mentioned again in here many times, we're not dominant enough in any one phase to just take over a game. We have to play well as a team to win big games. Thanks, Mark. JJ tweeted out a little bit ago that he's felt he's letting some people down. Have you sensed from him and maybe some other players that they're just feeling a bit discouraged or unhappy with the yeah, I think um, you know it's human nature. Um, you know when you know when things go go wrong. You know what I mean. And things are go are going are going bad. Um, you know to react in different ways. And I think um, you know you could definitely see some frustration in JJ. Not not even this last week, and and not towards anybody. Maybe just kind of down and in. And, uh, you know, he's worked hard. He's been around here a long time. He's been a really good player for us. And I think, you know, sometimes players, you know, are pressed and want to make plays, want to do well for themselves, for their team, for their future, for a lot of things. And, um, you know, the bottom line, and I'm not pointing this towards J.J., but towards any player, it comes down, it's a fundamental game. You know, when, you know, you know, you'll make plays when technique and opportunity meet, you know, and, and if you have great technique and you're working hard and you're relentless and, and you're doing things the right way, eventually, uh, you know, the, the production will be there. Speaking of that, Mark, obviously Alabama had given up a whole lot of quarterback sides, and they didn't give up any Saturday. Once you, after you look at the tape, is there any big explanation? Yeah, I was just we I was disappointed. It, it's, it's, and that's a fair fair point. You know what I mean? We just didn't do a very good job of getting to the quarterback. You know, we did. We did. Mark, over the past couple of years, you've you've had your fair share of victories against programs mm -hmm. like Missouri and, and South Carolina. And yet it seems like this year, uh, the success of those programs is what your critics use as a primary ammunition against you and your program, is, is that fair in, in your mind? It, it doesn't. You know, that I, I don't don't take this the wrong way. I mean, I, I don't care. I spend zero time thinking about that at all. I mean, zero. I mean, Eli and I are friends. I re, you know, I talk to him, you know. And, I mean, look, last year he was enduring a lot more pressure than I'm enduring right now, right? I mean, he was getting a lot, you know, and – He's having a heck of a year, and now, now I'm picking his brain. Hey, man, what are you doing? What you know what I mean? What's going on? Because we don't play him next year, you know. So, um, you know, he's done a heck of a job, and you know, all of us are built that way. I mean, we're not. I mean, I I can't speak for everybody, but I mean, if you're successful in this league and hang around for a while, you know, you're gonna have thick skin. You're gonna take it. You know, don't. That's why I never get too excited. I mean, have you ever seen me really, really excited after a win? 
you know, I know it's about seven days till I get a dart thrown right back in the middle of my <laughs> chest. So, I mean, that's why I don't get overly, you know, I get excited. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited for my players. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of the coaches. But I don't ever get too high and I don't ever get too low. Well, kind of building off that, I know obviously you don't have time to scour social media or message boards, but certainly uh, there's a lot of sniping between this fan base and South Carolina, especially since like the past year. Have you noticed that maybe it seems like this rivalry has intensified since you've been here? And obviously you had a lot to do with that because, I mean, they dominated this rivalry before you got here and you won seven of nine. Um, I haven't noticed. I don't notice. You know, about... I didn't know like fans come to you. Like, yeah. About six months ago or five months, I don't know, I got a new phone. I don't know how to work it no more. But with my Twitter. I, do, I don't. I don't. I swear I don't. I don't know how to work X. So it's kind of a good thing for me. I don't see a damn thing. So, uh, so um, I just got this because I had some, you know, I had to make sure my ticker was working right last week. Um, and uh, But I don't know how to use that. So I really don't. I pay no mind to it. Um, you know, it's competitive each and every week. Um, you know, as I just mentioned to the previous question, I don't get too high, too low. I don't have any personal, you know what I mean? There, there's nothing personal to me. It's about our university, our institution, our players, our fans, you know, working really hard to put them in a position to win. And I think... You know, everybody's like that. Mark, what you mentioned last week that Nasir Addison was a guy that's caught his eye. I know he had the fumble recovery on specials. And mm -hmm. With all the injuries at corner, is he a guy who can help the rest of the way? He could help and hopefully, you know, really give us some, some hope and some, some depth for the future because he's, he is put together, can run, you know, needs some experience. And, uh, you know, I like what I'm seeing out of him and I, I like his attitude. Mark, there was a few brass spots for Deion Walker in that game, maybe mm -hmm. in that game where you guys did struggle on defense. You say in the old ball placement, there's so much left on the table in these last two weeks. What kind of role does he play, not just on the field, but as he is one of your captains, he is playing a lot? Yeah. Well, you know, I've, 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 I've been proud of Dion. I mentioned it. You know, he's a guy that, much like, you know, the previous question I was asking about somebody else, but like, you know, adversity is going to hit all of us. There's going to be some good and some bad, and players are the same way. They're going to have some good games. Or, that, that the X, you know, people are going to be patting them on the back. Sometimes people are going to be criticizing them. And they just got to keep a, a level head. But for, for young men, sometimes it, it could get rocky. And he hasn't been perfect, but he's been impressive. I'll, I'll just put it that way. During some lows or during some bad times, he's pulled himself right back up. And that's a sign of maturity. And that's a sign of somebody that could go on to big things as a leader and as a player, to, to not let it defeat you, not let it get you. And I think, you know, I, I appreciate that about him. Coming from Detroit, you would expect that from him, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. When, you, when you look at the film of, like, a game against Alabama, which Alabama's obviously really good, how do you grade your players' performance considering – you know, that you're, you're not playing your average right. run in the middle too. Well, it is it is it, 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 it is at times. It is at times. You know, listen, we all have to own our stuff. Like if we have bad play we put if we put our players in bad position then then that's on us, you know, and, and, and I've said it before and you know, even through the years, I mean like coaches you know, sometimes and early on, you know, you've heard me talk about like trying to throw too much at the board, you know what I mean, to try to get a stop instead of being who you are and playing and doing that. And, you know, so there's there's enough criticism to go around all of us and we all have to own that. And then there's mat and then there's matchup problems, you know, and, and that's a reality, you know, and so um if you, you know, if you compete and you're in it long enough, I mean, you, you know, you're going to win and you're going to lose. In individual matchups, you're going to win and you're going to lose. And, uh, and I think you just have to um, look at each and every one of those scenarios and make sure you did everything you could, whether it was film study, anticipation, competitive nature, you know, did everything you could to put yourself in a position to be successful. And that, I think, everybody can always look at and judge and there's no escaping that and there's no running away from that and then there's other times when you're doing all those things and they beat you and you just you know that that's 
you know, you could live with the results if you've done everything you can to put yourself in a position to win. Mark, a lot of coaches don't like coaching against their friends. Uh, rumor has it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, the relationship you have with Coach Beamer, there's a little bit of an edge to it. Uh, does that add any additional spice to I have, this? I have no idea where you would get that information from that I mean I have no clue where that would come I absolutely I mean I don't feel that way maybe he does I don't know you have to ask him uh, but I don't feel that at all it's another game and uh, we need it for our university for our players it has zero to do with me and Shane there's still a lot to play for in these two games oh without without a doubt without a doubt you know we got to take them one at a time and you know, like I said, you try to, you know, try to get to seven, try to improve our, you know, our, our position, and that's our full concentration, but we all know what lies with the last one as well. So. I know on social media you don't pay a whole lot of attention to it, but... I told you I don't know how to work it anymore. <laughs> a lot of the, uh, the fan base is, mm-hmm. is, is as disgruntled as, as you mm-hmm. are about the way the season has gone. What, what do you want to say to them to get them back? I, no, no. When did I ever say I was disgruntled? You put words in my mouth. I never said I was disgruntled. I said I'll never be defeated. I mean, it may be a touch disappointed. I'm not disgruntled. I'm not defeated. I'm not, you know, I'm on to the next. I'm going to go try to win this game. And uh, to our fan base, what I would say is, again, thank you. They've been amazing. You know, I'm uh, disappointed to, to lose some games at home when they've had such great environments. You know, there, there's been some really good environments. And, um, and that's what I ask for and appreciate that support. And I know our players do. And uh, that's what it takes, you know. Um, we're going down to a team right now that uh, just just won what uh, whatever it was. They won back-to-back games, but have had a, had a bit of a struggle. And their stadium seems to be rocking as well. So... You know, that's that's what we need. You know, that's what we need in this league. And and uh, I would imagine uh, this, this, this this Saturday it'll be rocking down there. It'll be, a, it'll be a great environment, tough environment. I've been coming to games here for a day or two, but I don't ever remember the student support being as good as it's been the last yeah. few years. Yeah, I, I agree. It's just amazing. They're in there early. They're loud, uh, really rooting. And, you know, so what I would say is thank you, you know, to – you know, in, you know, fans have every right to 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 be how react however they want. I mean, they, they pay the money, they go, they support. You know, I I get it. You know, uh, I want a competitive uh, atmosphere as well. Mark, you mentioned like the South Carolina's environment. How many how many times this week do you think you're gonna hear Sandstorm? Are you a fan of that song? Well, you don't seem like a left guy. <laughs> I don't know how to work my phone, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but um. Yeah, you'll hear it. You guys will come over probably and, uh, and and cover us on what Tuesday and Wednesday. And if you come early enough, you'll be hearing it playing in there. Cause we got we we'll we'll hear it uh, quite a few times. It's part of our crowd noise. You know, we got to create a lot of crowd noise to for our communication for offensively, as you know. And uh, yeah, that'll be part of it. Well, if you were forever the game Saturday, he's doing a concert there. You can go to free. Pardon me. He's doing a concert, free game concert. Oh, there, Saturday. You can go to it if you weren't ready to come to the game. Oh, uh, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Oh, I got some guys. Everybody laugh at me. Everybody got some guys that can help me. Yeah. Yeah. You want to send Antonio to come on there? Yeah.